Follow me! Here is Adventure, starring John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara. It will surely take its place among John Ford's greatest triumphs. You're too kind. Welcome to A Word on Westerns. We are in for a thrill tonight, a treat, because we've just finished watching Rio Grande. Did you have a good time? Did you like that? We have Mr. Patrick Wayne. He was in the movie. He was that cute little kid. And then as Trooper York, the great Claude Jarman Jr. <laughs> So, gentlemen, that was only, what, 72 years ago. I know. It was crazy. Like yesterday. And, you know, we lost contact. And then in 1990, I joined this uh, club, men's club in San Francisco, and at a summer encampment, he was a member already, and we were reintroduced, and we were close friends for another 30 years. So, yeah! That's yeah. it. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Let's, let's talk about John Ford, because you had won an Academy Award for The Yearling. Correct. And you got a call, you'd gone back to school, and you got a call from John Ford to, to come in and talk to him? I got a call, I was in Nashville, where I was in school, and I got a call asking if I could come out for an interview. You know, working for John Ford, of course I'm gonna do that, because I, I was very excited about coming out, so I came out and I went out to Republic, and uh, I went in and there was Ford and Marion Cooper, the producer, and you know Ford, as Pat would know, he's sitting there chewing his handkerchief yeah. and yeah. had his uh, kerchief and doing all stuff. And he, and he said, uh, "How are your marks?" I said, "You mean in school?" I said, "Yeah, I, you know I'm doing okay." He said, uh, "Do you like to play sports?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "What do you do?" I said, "Well, you know, usual high school. I play all the sports." And he said, uh, okay, we'll see you. So I, thought, I, drove, I flew all the way to California, and I had a 10-minute interview. And Did you know that you had the part at that time? No, my agent went in after I did, and he came out, and he said, you got the part. So that was it. Be back in three weeks, four weeks, and you're in. Wow. So that was my introduction to John now, Ford. Now, Patrick, you had, you know, because of your dad, uh, known probably John Ford before you knew he was John Ford. He was my godfather. Well, and, and his casting for you, was this uh, in Rio Grande, was that your first speaking part in a movie? hundred percent. I mean, I, I was uh, barely able to talk. <laughs> but, you know, and my dad, you know, my, my dad said, Look, how old are you? And I said, I'm nine years old, sir. I'll be 10 in a month, sir. He says, uh, boy, you have been, you know, living off the dole here. You got to get to work. You know? <laughs> get out there, start working. I said, well, what do I get? He says, 10 bucks a day. I said, okay, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Hadn't stopped uh, for the whole 20th century. But um, it, was, it was interesting. It developed for me because I had uh, three siblings at the time, older brother and sister and a younger sister. They had no interest in, in, in working on films or anything. So when I would go to work with my dad, I'm, they weren't there. I had them all to myself. It made it really special. Mm. That was the beginning of it. Was that the first film you remember going on location with? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, first one. Did several after that, but yeah. In the encampment, I, I know Moab is a lot different shooting there than in Monument Valley where you went and they did the searchers. Everybody is set up in tents out uh, in, in the sand, but in Moab, because it's closer to the town, weren't you guys staying in houses in the hotels, motels there in town? In, in the motels, yeah. I mean, I don't really remember that. Do you remember? I yeah, we went to a motel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a commissary where they set it up, and that's where we had our meals. In, was in there the much town. separation between the crew and, and the cast? No. None? Not at all. Mm -hmm. No, it was... It was a very cohesive group. Mm -hmm. That seemed like it was a more relaxed shoot for John Ford than the others. He was doing it 
kind of like a throwaway film yeah. because he was doing it to get the money and approval to do yeah. The Quiet Man, but yet it turned out to be, I think, one of the most heartwarming John Ford yeah. films. The, the compositions, and I love the black and white. Uh, it just was magnificent, and it, yeah. and it takes you to a, a different time, but every frame, and the camera's not moving, were the great faces that Ford had. Yeah. Now, he... Was Meticulously mad. designed all of that. Oh, he had an eye for that, yeah. It, it, he, from, from working in silence. Yeah. Now, he was mad at people. He would pick on people, and you were the new kid. Did he ever pick on you, Claude? I was very fortunate. The, the word says, and I think Pat knows more than I do, but they said he would always have a favorite. They'd also have someone who was not a favorite. That's right. In and he brain. would pick on somebody, and he picked on Ben Johnson for some reason. Ben could do nothing right. Mm. Just shut up, Ben, and get on a horse. Forget the lions. He was just mean to him. Pretty tough, yeah. And uh, for me, because I'd done the Roman writing, I could do no wrong. <laughs> that, that Roman writing sequence was so fabulous. I heard that even in those early days of uh, this club that you were together. So I know what you're going to say. I'll tell them. Uh, a lot of people who've seen the movie, they automatically always want to say, Roman writing, did you really do that? I said, yes, I did it. John Ford called me in three weeks before production and said he wanted me to try to learn to do that and to go out to whatever that farm was and, and learn with, uh, with uh, Dobie and, uh, and Ben Johnson, which I did. But when... Uh, McLaughlin says, would you like to ride? And I say, yes. Then you show me to do this group amount, get on the horse. And, and there's no cut. So no. Ford wanted to be sure that I got credit for yeah. doing that. Well, so you deserve it. it. So we're going through this whole routine. I'm talking to these guys one night. We're sitting around drinking a little white wine or whatever. And they said, you, come on, you didn't do that. I said, look, I did it. He's camp I, I said, of course I did it. And, I, and they said, well, how, how, how do we know that? Pat was there, ask, ask Pat. <laughs> I'm his bona fides. And I he said, so I said, Pat, did he do that? And Pat says, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. <laughs> well, when you, when you first showed up and, and you saw Ben and Doby doing that, and what were you, 15 years old? Yeah. And you jumped right up on those horses? What was their reaction to that? Uh, ben was a little angry, I think. <laughs> <laughs> they were a little surprised. Oh. Yeah. And, and what made it so easy for you to be able to do that? Well, I don't know. I, I made about four Westerns. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd been riding horses a lot. And you had ridden with Joel McRae. Ridden with Joel McRae. Uh, and I loved riding horses. Yeah. Even in True to the Dust, I was riding a horse. So, anyway, it was not that hard, frankly. And when you're 15... Riding horses is not Roman riding. It was damn hard. <laughs> he's, he's being humble. He was great. He was amazing. Now, now Patrick, did, did Ford ever pick on you? You know, I worked, I worked in, in Ford films. In addition to my dad's film, I worked in uh, Mr. Roberts and The Long Gray Lion, The Sun Shines Bright, and Cheyenne Autumn. F films for Ford that, that, that my dad wasn't in. And he never, ever picked on me. But you still go to work waiting for the other shoe to fall. <laughs> you think it's going to happen. So you still have the same anxiety of, is it going to be my day to day? <laughs> so he might as well have. You know, I would have just as soon he did it, got it over with, and we went, we went on. <laughs> never happened. Never happened. Here is a woman's torture, fighting for her boy, a soldier before he is a man. The scenes with you and Maureen O'Hara, now that was her first film with Duke and mm -hmm. John Ford. What was she like? Oh, she was wonderful. Mm -hmm. she, we were just saying to Pat, she was actually gorgeous in this film. Mm -hmm. She was really beautiful and was a nice person, lovely person. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, a great experience, frankly. And hanging out with, with Ben Johnson and, oh. and Dobie, what was that like? That was just wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love both of them. And uh, Doby, I stayed friends with him until he passed away. We used to go down and visit him all mm -hmm. the time. 
And one of the things that came through tonight, uh, uh, when, we, when they had the Sons of the Pioneers, yeah. who were singing. Yellow stripes on bridges, blue, ride lonely for us, just so we can ride behind and gaily sing this chorus. Who was just beautiful. And Ken Curtis was the lead singer. And I don't know whether all you people know or not, but do you remember Festus and Gunsmoke? That was Ken Curtis. Well, this crowd would know that, right? <laughs> A yeah, lot that, of people uh, don't know that. He, he, he had that, 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 I don't know what you would call that accent that he had. Especially, but he did it first in um, The Searchers. Mm -hmm. oh, his did character he? in The Searchers, oh, okay. yeah. He was that. like uh, in competition with Jeff Hunter for the Vera Miles character. And... Um, and then he, you know, he brought it to fruition. And he didn't want to do that accent in The Searchers either. He was married to John Ford's daughter, uh, who mm -hmm. was an editor. Yeah. But uh, I, I heard that like Ford said it was okay because Ken would come over and sing all the time. Yeah. Was there a lot of singing and music during the shoot? There was a lot of people sitting around. Uh, Sons of the Pioneers loved to sing. Mm -hmm. Stan Jones, who wrote the music, was there. There was just a lot of music going on. And one of the things that I remember about Ken Curtis was before he went, joined the Sons of the Pioneers, he, was, uh, he sang with Tommy Dorsey's yes. band. So he was a, a real bona fide, legitimate, yeah. legitimate yeah. singer. Yeah. And he always said that Tommy Dorsey, he's convinced, hired him because he wanted him to beat up Frank Sinatra. Oh my, God. oh my God. That's a hard thing to live uh, up to. And he said Sinatra must have sensed that because he was so nice to him. Oh, that's funny. Because he tried with Merv Griffin too, who also sang with Tommy Dorsey, but that wasn't going yeah. to happen. Anyway, but it was well, just it, an unusual group of people. I mean, it really was. You, know, you could sit around and listen to Victor McLaughlin oh. forever. I mean, he had stories. Oh, when I was police chief of Baghdad, and when oh, I, yeah. I mean, you couldn't believe any I mean, of this. You know that he was a prize fighter. You could yeah. see his ear. A heavyweight was, champion of Canada. Heavyweight champion, so. yeah. Do you, and you believed all that. Oh, of it? course, yeah. you couldn't. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of Victor and, and the stock company that Ford had with him, you saw him surrounded by the same people. You saw the good Chuck and the bad Chuck. Uh, in that, uh, the stunt guys, the greatest stunt people around. The stunt work did, because uh, you were doing a lot of that riding with the cavalry yeah. and everything too, was, uh, was that dangerous at all? Did you see any of the gags uh, come apart or anybody get hurt? Uh, to my knowledge, nobody got hurt, mm -hmm. which is amazing, because yeah, there were a lot of really rough things that were going on. There were things that they don't even do anymore. Mm -hmm. That were, you yeah, know, they don't. That's right. Yeah. Because you were so young at the time, uh, did you bunk in the same area that your dad did? Well, actually, I remember on a McClintock, uh, we actually shared a room. What happened was we were shooting in Old Tucson, where we had pretty good accommodations, and then we shot the mudslide fight that was near Tombstone, and we stayed in Tombstone, and there was very few accommodations. And my, my dad and I shared a room, and it was, I mean, it would made Motel 6 look like uh, the Ritz-Carlton. <laughs> Linoleum floors, and it was, you know, it was like 100 degrees in old Tucson. When we get to Tombstone and we're in the mud in the water, it was like 30 degrees. Mm. And it would get cold at night. And my dad and I would go to bed, invariably go to bed, fall asleep with the TV on, and it, you know, it's the crack of dawn, I mean, at midnight or two in the morning, I woke up and this TV screen was <laughs> static, going bright light, and, I'm, and I looked down at the floor. I did not want to get out of bed and walk on this floor. And so I'm, I'm thinking there for a minute, I see my dad start to move around, so I closed my eyes really tight, but I was kind of squinting and watching him over there. And my dad woke up and he looked at the TV, and then he looked over at me and he was like trying to will me to wake up. I'm biting my lip to keep from laughing and, and all this. Finally, he throws the covers back and he gets about halfway across this floor, you know, on this ice cold floor. Of course, I had to break out of the laughter. It's the only time I ever got a good one on my dad. <laughs> oh, man. Now, somebody had uh, sent me a question about in McClintock where he throws you against the horse. Oh, he loved doing that, yeah. 
I think you mentioned about having a montage of all the times he shoots you, he hits you, he beats oh, you. Oh yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can't think of a film he didn't clobber me in one way or another. <laughs> yeah, it worked out that way. Yeah. <laughs> Fun stuff. Yeah. Well, what is it about westerns that that especially the John Ford films and your dad's films, all of them seem to be classics, that it, there's a resurgence right now in Westerns. What is the reason behind that, do you think? I mean, we all have our own opinions. I happen to think that it represents uh, something that is refreshing about America, it's about our heritage, uh, certain values, the core values that uh, of you know, self-reliance, uh, being trustworthy, being honest. Uh, every once in a while, you gotta, you know, you gotta look back at this stuff, and you can always find it in the, in the Western genre, I think. But let me ask you, Claude, about your Academy Award-winning film, The Yearling, because you had no background as an actor, and you just got plucked out of school by Clarence Brown. How did that come about? They started to make The Yearling in 1939, and the war came on, Spencer Tracy had the role, he hated it, he didn't, he didn't like the movie at all. They shut it down, Victor Fleming was the director. And uh, so they shut it down and then in 1945, as the war was winding down, they decided to uh, make it again and Clarence Brown was one of their top directors. he just done National Velvet mm -hmm. uh, with Elizabeth Taylor, he had done uh, human comedy with Butch Jenkins, so he had a way with children. And he decided that he wanted to make the movie and he wanted to find the boy himself. He didn't like the way they were sending out talent scouts. And he would go into a school, into a city like Nashville. He'd go to the Board of Education. He would say, identify himself. He said, I would like to go and visit the fifth grade of the various schools around your city. And if I see anyone I like, I'd like to be able to talk to them. If I don't, I'll leave. Nobody will know I've been there. And he came to my school on a Valentine's Day on a Friday afternoon at 10 minutes to 3, 10 minutes before it ended. I was standing at the board doing some things. And How said, old were you? I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, they called me into the office. He talked to me. He said, I want to come by later and, and talk to you. I don't, you know, what's this all about? And anyway, over the next couple of days, we talked, and uh, I wanted to come, wanted me to come to California, make a test. And my father went with me, and after two months, nothing was happening. I was in the studio school there, and I thought, well, what, what's going to happen? And then I started making tests, but I was making tests with people that they were testing to be the mother. Mm -hmm. They'd already had Gregory Peck, but they wanted to do the mother. So, that was my test, and uh, so I never really tested for it. Clarence Brown said, you're the guy, I make yeah. the decision, and you're it. Do you remember who some of the actresses were who you I tested? I don't know who, who the, who the uh, Anne Revere was one that had been in it uh, earlier, and they ended up hiring a girl named Jacqueline White, who was only 20 years old, mm -hmm. and after three months of shooting, they replaced her. So everything that we had shot, we had to reshoot, and they replaced it with Jane Wyman. And all that stuff was shot on the studio lot, right? No, no, we were in Florida. All in Florida. Florida, yeah. Wow. But it was a, it was a two year project. Mm -hmm. I started in 45, and it came out early 47. You were shaving I, by the time they ended. Yeah, just about. How many inches did you grow in that time? I, six inches. Six inches. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> But you probably, or they probably had to replace the deer periodically because the deer Well, we had one deer, amazingly enough, that we used pretty much throughout the uh -huh. whole film. It was the only deer who would have the ability, when it sits in your lap, would fold up her, his legs and would sit there like this. Most of them don't, they want to be able to go. And that deer was just... That was a Perfect. wonderful relationship, Perfect. too. It's yeah. so really, sad. It's so sad. It was sad. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about Joel McRae just a little bit, because you did uh, the, the Outriders. Outriders with Joel McRae, and you did a lot of great writing in that. I know it's not 
regarded as a, as a classic like Hangman's Knot or, or Rio Grande, but yet to do a Joel McRae movie, yeah. that must have been a thrill. It was made in uh, Kanab, mm -hmm. Utah, and it was uh, Arlene Dahl, Barry Sullivan, and uh, Joel McRae. And it was, a, it was a, you know, a fun set. I rode a lot of horses and I drowned. That went not a very happy end. No, <laughs> not at all. How can we not talk about The Searchers since you're here? And everybody has seen The Searchers. This is your first time here at the Lone Pine Film Festival. The Searchers has resonated with all of us, I think, here. When, when, uh, when The Searchers came out, it wasn't really a, uh, a critical or a financial success. Uh, but like a generation later, when uh, Coppola and Spielberg and uh, uh, these boys are in film school, they discovered the film and it became a cult hit and, and, and attained probably you know the status that it should have had all the time. Just the timing was was different for it. Uh, it was great for me. I mean, I had Natalie Wood and we were two young people. And we didn't have anybody our age there, so it was great. <laughs> well, let's talk about that then. No, we won't. Uh, well, you lucky boy. That's yeah, exactly. All I can say. Yeah, yeah. She was great. Wonderful girl. <laughs> well, we're glad you were invited to come here for this. And, this is uh, this has been wonderful. I appreciate all the people here. Give yourselves a hand. Yeah. I had a great opportunity to have my wife with me, and and she's been. We've both been awed by, by, the, by the people and by the scenery and it's, it's, it's in the mountains. It's really, it's, you guys are very lucky to live here. Then and what did you think of the museum, all the artifacts? Oh, no, everything. Oh, everything is just yeah. terrific. For a town of a couple of thousand people to have a museum like that, it's, yeah, it's really no, it's, amazing, it's, really. Well, and this yeah. festival has been going on for decades and, and it's because of people who come and visit like you and share their film experiences mm -hmm. and then appreciate and, and, and see the, the locale because this town, this area, this is film history right yeah, here. No, it's, yeah. And did you know I'm going horseback riding with your wife tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> well, everybody, I want to thank you all for coming and let's give a big hand for our stars.